Every week I get together with fellow physics platformer racing enthusiasts from around the world for a bit of track mania. And it's hosted on this. I've been playing Trackmania since, well, this guy came out. It was an okay game for its time. Then Trackmania 2 Stadium showed up and for whatever reason, I clicked with it. So much so that I've been hosting an online server for the past two years. But like a lot of you, I like hosting stuff at home, not in the cloud. So I grabbed my kilowatt and started looking for the lowest power device that could theoretically run a Trackmania server. And we have a winner. At 100% load, this Pi Zero W2 pulls 5 watts, and at 11 cents per kilowatt hour, running 24-7, that's about $5 a year. But this is a winner with problems. The first one being the Pi Zero is ARM, and the Trackmania server, well, it's x86. But before we tackle that, we need to find a way to attach an Ether Noodle, because I'm not running a server over Wi-Fi, just on principle. I ended up using this 10100 hat from Waveshare, even comes with a little case. Link in the description. Now that that's taken care of, we need to pick our least favorite child. Install Raspi Lite and see if we can make a Trackberry Pi. The first thing we're going to do is download the Trackmania 2 server and decompress it. Now let's try to run that Linux binary. That ended predictably. That's because it's compiled for x86-64, and we're on ARM64. This is where Box64 comes in. It lets you run x86-64 binaries on ARM64. And if people are using it to play games, it can probably handle the server from 2013. So that means it's time to f around and find out. Now I could walk you through the steps needed to install Box64, but it's a lot easier to just paste this into the terminal and smash enter. It's time for take two. Task failed successfully. And that's a good sign, it aired out where it normally would. Before I go any further, I'm going to give it a static IP address, and big in the swap, overclock the snot out of it, and set up some basic network security. Back from that reboot, so let's get this setup started by downloading the stadium title pack and editing the default server config. Now we need a map. This one seems quite appropriate, so let's give it a save, and now I can create a match setting telling the server where to find the map. In theory, these moon glyphs should launch a Trackmania 2 server. And I'm seeing a lot, and I mean a lot, of warnings fly by. But as long as play shows up, we're good to go. Probably. Ish. Let's check top. Okay, that's using fewer resources than I expected. Hmm, now I have other plans. But first, let's see if we can find the server on the local network and drive around a bit. Here we are using around 10% at idle and that's going to jump up to about 35% when joining the server and driving around. But if we add another player, it's only a few percent more, so we should be able to handle somewhere around 12 players. So that leaves us with plenty of room to get up to something. Having a Trackmania server is neat, but you probably want to keep track of your local records, submit those records to Dedamania, vote on maps, and queue up new ones. And to do that, we need a server controller. And that server controller's name is PyPlanet. It's a big ball of Python. And to get it running, we'll need to install some dependencies, set up a database, and maybe a Python virtual environment. Now let's launch the manager and see if Trackberry, you know, implodes. Not only does it load, there's still plenty of wiggle room. I know for a fact that this setup can handle seven players with a little room to spare. All right, show of hands. Who's waiting to leave the comment about how this is going to murderate a poor, innocent little micro SD card? Chill. It's 2024. These critters are four bucks a pop and they come in multi-packs. Murderate with gusto. But you'll have to find another project since neither the Trackmania server or the server controller spend much time writing the disk. This little guy, he should chug along for a couple of years without issue or die next Tuesday. Either way, don't let that be an excuse to skip regular backups. At the end of the day, we have a no compromise Trackmania server that costs $5 a year to run. How cool is that? Why stop there? You could have Pyraria, Seven Days to Pi, Counter Pi 2, PyTorio, and others. But I'm going to leave that research up to you. As always, there's a link to the full write-up in the video description. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, unless they're big questions then leave those in the forums. But most importantly, get out there and poke something. 
with your Linux sticks.